I'm Don Blackburn. Welcome to my new music show, The Beat Stops Here. You know, I've been playing drums and teaching a lot of years now, and I still love it as much now as when I first started, if not more. So I thought it'd be really cool in this first episode is to teach you how to play drums. And I want to do so using my new drum set instruction book, The Circle of Drums. What's revolutionary about this book, it teaches a drum set just using two drills. One, the eight measure drill, which teaches you how to play songs, and two, the marching drill, which teaches you how to play solos. And it also serves as a general introductory first lesson. So, let's go ahead and get started. In general, music is at least 12 chord notes, as we see from left to right, starting with the whole note all the way uh, to a, an eighth note tied to two sixteenths. All right? Now, music takes these 12 notes and breaks them down into two categories, melody and rhythm. And if you can see here, most of us understand that, that melody sections uh, incorporate vocals, guitar, piano, classified uh, in, as rhythm instruments. And drums, specifically, drums break down into two disciplines, beats and fills. And you can see here the eight measure drill addresses the beats, which ultimately turn into songs, and the marching drill uh, addresses the fills. Uh, a drum fill is, is a one, two, three, or four beat uh, cadence, if you will, uh, and anything longer than a one measure is a lot of times classified as a solo. So, the marching drill takes care of the fills and solos, and also serves as our first lesson, uh, introductory lesson. Now, point two here, we have the marching drill. What is it? Okay, we're taking these 12 notes, all right, and we're going to play them with our hands, learn to add uh, uh, notes and so forth into this mix, and we're going to play quarter notes with both feet while we're doing so. Um, in the past, a lot of us used metronomes, and a lot of you may use those as well. Um, when I was about 7th, 8th grade, I started using quarter notes both feet. I saw Keith Moon of the Who doing it, and, and I realized that the metronomes were too easy to ignore, or a lot of times back then hard to hear. So I used both feet in the drill. It really accentuates the quarter note pulse. In addition, you can see down here, I've, I've listed the spices separately. We have a, a, a eighth rest here, but that really a, a stands for rest in general. And here is a flam, a rough, an accent. We have double strokes in drums. We have Z, that's a buzz row. Uh, we have uh, paradiddles, a right, left, right, right, or a left, right, left, left. And we have a crash. Now this is what's important about this drill, is that in, in most books that I, that I went through, and, and, and a lot of uh, ones that you may have seen as well, uh, what you'll see is uh, three or four of these notes introduced, and then the rest are shown, or flams and rusts, these spices as I call them, uh, are introduced pretty early before uh, most students get a chance to juggle all 12 of them. And that's a hard enough task as it is. So that's where I started myself personally. Um, and incidentally, I got the idea for the, these uh, two drills uh, about two weeks prior to my first uh, performance when I was 14. I was given uh, a list of songs, about 40 songs, and told, hey kid, you've got two weeks, learn these songs and be ready to do a solo. So that pretty much hammered home you know, the basics to me. And what I did was for a week, I just listened to the songs. And I started hearing the same beat in about four or five different songs. So I made myself a little uh, uh, um, cheat sheet, and, and I just listed six main beats, and then listed all the songs underneath them. Um, and in addition, though, that was the first time I really started hearing these beat spices. They, they were never really uh, noted in these books, but they were shown. But um, I started uh, hearing them, and so I named them. Uh, and uh, it was really helpful for me just to master these 12 notes first, uh, juggling them for five minutes is what I did. Once I mastered that, then I started adding these spices on one at a time over the span of the next uh, two or three months. And it took me about six months total to learn both drills. But, but once I did, I can't play any fills or solos any better now than when I was 14. It was, it was that revolutionary. When you get it, you get it. And, and it's a way to really hammer home uh, all these disciplines. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, show you how to do this really quick on the set, the marching drill. All right, we're going to start with the marching drill first, notes only, no spices. And I'm going to go for about 15 or 20 seconds. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with quarter notes, both feet, just like that. And I'm going to follow with quarter notes with my hands. And little by little, just throw one of the, one of the 11 groups on a count of one. So we're one, two, three, four. Goes to one.
That's it. All right, now let's add the eight fill spices to the marching drill. All right, and the fill spices are rest, flams, rust, accents, double strokes, buzz rows, paradiddles, and a crash. Okay? Okay, now let's address the eight measure drill, uh, point number three here, which deals specifically uh, with beats and, and using these beats in, in standard length phrases. Um, if you notice here at the top, I have four patterns written for you, and I call these a 1-1, one, one, a 1-2, one, two, a 2-2, two, two, and beat Z. In the middle here, I have the sequence of how we're going to play these. S stands for simple, B stands for busy. And then down below, I have eight ways to spice up these beats. Okay. Now, years ago, what I what I started hearing in songs uh, when I was a young kid and, and preparing uh, uh, these drills, I started hearing a lot of drummers uh, spicing up every second measure. They would take a, a particular main beat, uh, which Quincy Jones calls a riff beat. They would take a main beat in measure one, and the second measure they would spice it up either with one of these other I call them compatible beats. Uh, in, in the book here, in Circle of Drums, on page 12, it shows you the 15 core rock beats. And then down below, you have eight ways to spice them up. Now, a song uh, may use a 1-1 one, one as the riff beat, and every second measure, I can use one of these others, or one of the, the, the other 14 in the book, or I can use one of these other spices to spice it up. Uh, we have compatible beats, rest, left jab one, left jab two, uh, open hi-hat, an extra bass drum hit, a crash, and an accent. And the sequence they're using is an eight bar sequence, an eight measure sequence. S stands for simple, busy, simple, busy, simple, busy, simple, fill. So if I was just looking at uh, this one one here, let's say song number one, uh, this is the riff beat, I would play the one one in measure one. The second measure, I could use one of these others, or one of the others in the book, or I could use one of these red, or one, excuse me, one of these other spices down here in measure two. Anything to make it busier. And this mimics conversations between people. I say something to you, hey, how you doing? And you say, fine, I'm doing well. Okay, so drums really kind of mimic those kind of conversations. We play two measure increments when we're playing right, as opposed to just like a beat. So uh, I might go uh, one, one, and then I might play a one, two. If you can see here, one, two is busier. It's got extra, an extra bass drum hit. Measure three, I would play the one one again. Measure four, I might play a two two. As you can see, it's busier. It's got two bass drum hits. This is the bass drum down here. That's your snare drum, and the X's up here are your hi hat. All right. Measure five, I'm going to play the one one again. Measure six, I might hit a crash symbol. That's one of the uh, eight beat spices. Measure seven, I'm going to play the one one again. And measure eight, I'm going to play a one measure drum fill. And then I'm just going to repeat that. And that's mostly uh, what modern contemporary pop, rock, country, uh, worship songs, that's kind of the format that they use, an eight, eight measure sequence. And we do that about ten times a song. And that equals about three and a half minutes. I personally did the drill for five minutes because I wanted an extra minute and a half just to keep me mentally focused a little bit longer uh, um, and uh, just for the endurance sake. So let's give it a try. All right, let's get started on the eight measure drill. I'm going to use the one one as our riff beat. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to play a 1-1. One, one. Every second measure, I'm going to use one of the spices. Um, and then on the eighth measure, I'm going to do a drum fill. And I'm going to do this about, about three eight-bar passages to give you kind of a fill uh, for what I'm doing. And in reality, uh, one, beat, one riff beat per song is probably understating it. Some songs, uh, uh, hip-hop and whatnot, may use just one riff uh, beat uh, these days. Um, the book itself uses three riff beats. What you'll do is you'll take a riff beat uh, and define it in, in the first eight bar passage. The second passage, you'll pick a new riff beat and, and vamp to it. And then the third passage, you would pick a new riff beat. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to take the one one and, and give you a, a, 
an introductory uh, lesson on it. Alright, let's try it. One, two, three, Okay, now let's address solos. All right, solos are broken down into two types. We have short solos and we have long solos. All right, the two most commonly used short solo formats are three and ones and two and twos. What these numbers stand for, the three stands for how many beats, how many measures of a beat you'll play, and the one stands for uh, one measure of a drum fill. The two and twos stand for two measures of a drum beat, two measures of a solo. Okay, and you'll see these in jazz band in school quite a bit. Uh, these slashes right here, this is called slash notation. This just means for you to improv. There are no notes there. It's just saying we have four measures here, and they want you to solo. So um, let me show you here really quick. Uh, what I'm showing you here is, is previously a four-measure rest. And a lot of you may know incremental counting. This is just a way for us to count uh, multiple uh, measure rest. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Okay? Most of us, that was the only incremental count that we learned. Uh, in the book, I've addressed some new incremental counts uh, uh, that address uh, things more specifically. Um, if you see this last notation here, your main concern in a solo is, is to start at the right place and end at the right place. As you can see here, I'm playing a beat coming into these four measures. Then I have to play a beat, you know, with the rest of the band coming out of the solo. So I got to make sure I, I hit the my starting off point exactly, and I come back in uh, with the rest of the band correctly. So what I learned to do instead of counting one, two, three, four, I'm just counting one out loud and then clicks under my breath while I'm soloing. I'm going one, two, three, four and then re reassuming uh, 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 with the rest of the band after that. All right, uh, let's look at long solos. All right, looks like we have four different categories. One, Mr. Zippy. All right, I once saw a drummer uh, play a solo. He started off really fast at about 120, 130 beats a minute, and he went on for four or five minutes and got faster, uh, ending up at about 180, 190 beats a minute. It, it was, uh, though it lacked in a little creativity, it was really impressive, and, and the crowd loved it. So. Uh, that's one format you can follow. Gradual just means gradually speed up. Uh, main point is we want to finish all those, all solos strong. Uh, but gradual solos you can start off at maybe 80, 60 beats a minute, 70, you know, whatever you like. Uh, but gradually over the course of your solo, three to four minutes uh, is pretty standard for long solos. Uh, uh, speed up and, and finish strong. Uh, wave solos. Uh, wave solos allow you to incorporate uh, varying uh, emotions and feelings and, and tempos within the solo. You can start off slow, increase in speed, slow back down. I've seen drummers you know, play with their hands, uh, use uh, uh, other percussion instruments, shakers, um, whatever you like. The point is that you're, you're not stuck with one tempo, you can deviate from the tempo. Crowds love those. Again, finish the solo strong either with a one specific hit or, or you can end solos with a three or four measure uh, uh, slowdown, a retard, uh, if you will. Movie scenario was explained to me uh, by my former instructor, Mr. Pat Moore. All solos are like movies. We have an intro, a plot, subplots, we have a climax, and we have an ending. So these are just some ways uh, I start thinking about long solos. Uh, and there isn't, uh, I was taught, you know, there's, there's one way to do it. There's really not. You know, we have three or four different uh, 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 styles out there depending on, on the drummer. Well that about wraps up our first show. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. In future episodes, hope to cover more music theory, uh, drum tuning, polyrhythms, 
And most specifically, I want to highlight a lot of the great uh, talent that we have here in the tri-state area. Also, if you'd like to purchase a copy of the book, H&H &H Music uh, on Washington Avenue is selling them. They'd love to sell you a copy. Uh, until then, I'm Don Blackburn. Remember, the beat stops here.